now we have the other notation which is the theta notation the theta notation by writing the symbol theta so whenever you say that theta of g of n so here actually you are you are going to denote the set of function f of n f of n such that there exist positive constant c1 c2 and n0 such that f of n f of n is less than or equal to c2 into g of n and f of n is greater than or equal to c1 times g1 g of n and all are the positive function and this condition is holds true for every value of n greater than or equal to n0 this is the n0 so <clears throat> now see this is the situation so f of n is bounded by the two functions f of n is bounded by the two functions f of n is less than or equal to c2 into g of n and at the same time f of n should also be greater than or equal to c1 into g of n so here g of n and g of n g of n is same only the f of n is bounded by the two which bounded by the function g of n within the constant time so c1 and c2 are the constant okay so whenever <clears throat> in other case you know that whenever you are going to say like this f of n f of n is less than or e f of n is less than or equal to c2 into into g of n this means you are going to denote the big o notation so you okay you are going to say that f of n is big o of g of n once you say f of n is less than or equal to c into g c2 into g of n it means you are saying that f of n is big o of g of n when you say when you say f c time c1 into g of n is less than or equal to f of n means f of n is greater than c1 into g of n this means you are specifying that f of n so you are going to specify that f of n is big omega of g of n so this means what for being for being theta notation so you can say that f of n is theta of g of n if and only if f of n is both f of n is both what f of n is theta of sorry f of n is big o of g of n and f of n is big omega of g of n so this is the condition for being theta of g of n it must be both big o of g of n and big omega of g of n so see <clears throat> here actually you are going to denote and in the with the help of the graph you can say like this this may c c2 into g of n and here you will have c1 into g of n and here this is f of n and this is the value of n0 okay so here what you are seeing f of n here you have the f of n f of n f of n is sent which be between the two functions this is 
so f of n is this and you know that g of n g of n if whatever be the degree of g of n whatever it is same as g of n only f of n is bounded by the some constant factor nothing else so that's why f of n is sandwiched between the two function c1 into g of n and c2 into g of n so that's why this denotes the asymptotic tight one let us see example so if you have f of n is 5 n square plus 10 so <clears throat> what you want to say that if you are if you want to say that f of n is theta of n square if you want to say that this is f of n is theta of n square then what you need to prove you need to prove that f of n is f of n is big o of n square and f of n is also big omega of n square so see means you need to prove that say so you have the f of n which is the 5 n square plus 10 and you know that this is less than or equal to 6 times n square here c is equal to 6 if c is equal to 6 what is the value of n 0 for which this relationship holds to there may be some value say for example if you roughly you can substitute for example n is equal to 10 it may satisfy for the less value also if n is equal to 10 then here 10 means 100 and multiply by 6 600 here you have the 600 here you have the 100 multiply by 5 500 plus 10 510 and this is less than or equal to this if n is equal to 20 then also this is this side is larger than this so this holds true for every value of for all value of n greater than or equal to 10 this 10 i am not saying this is the exact it may have you may have some less value also roughly i have mentioned you that this relationship holds true for every value of n greater than or equal to 10 it may holds also for the c1 or right you can check it may or may not but from c1 10, 10 onwards this condition will host to now <clears throat> if this is true then what you can say that this is f of n is this so this is big o of n square okay now if you want to say that this is this is the f of n and this is greater than or equal to some c into g of n and g of n is what say n square and if you write here say for example 4 to see you need to determine some value of n0 for which this condition holds true so if n is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1 then this condition holds true if n is equal to 2 also then also this condition holds true if n is equal to 10 also then also this condition holds means this condition holds true for every value of n greater than or equal to 1 and hence you can say that f of n is big omega of n square and that's why you can say f of n is theta of n square because f of n is both big o of n square and it is the big omega of n square so here you know that this relationship holds true for all value of n greater than or equal to 1. This relationship holds true for every value of n greater than or equal to 10. This means the whole thing will hold true for every value of n greater than or equal to 10. And hence f of n is this, f of n is less than c1, c2 into g of n and this is greater than or equal to c1 into g of n. And for what? For every value of n greater than or equal to 10. And that's why you can say that f of n is theta of theta of n square. Now question is that can you say that f of if f of n is this, can you say that f of n, can you say f of n is theta of n cube? For being theta of n cube, what you need to show that 
you have to show that f of n is big o of n q means f of n is big o of n q you need to show then how this means degree of here polynomial f of n is 2 and here degrees of g of n is 3 so you can f of n is less than or equal to c times g g of n and this will hold true because the rate of growth of this polynomial of degree 3 is higher than the polynomial of degree 2 so just yes, this is f of n is if f of n is this then you can say that f of n is big o of n q now you have to also prove that at the same time f of n should also be big omega of n q once you say f of n is big omega of n q this means f of n is what f of n should be greater than or equal to some constant say multiply by n q and f of n is uh, degree of polynomial of f of n is what 2 and here g of n is 3 so you cannot say that this is greater than or equal to this for some for some totally okay so that's why you, you cannot say that f of n is big omega of n q so this means you you are not able to say that f of n is theta of n q can you say that f of n is theta of n f of n can we say that f of n is degree of f of n is 2 and here g of n is 1 so you can say that this is greater than or equal to this means f of n can be big big omega of n but can you say that f of n is less than n you cannot say f of n is less than because here degree is 2 and degree is 1 so f of n cannot be said as f of n is big o of n so you cannot say f of n is big o of n but you can say that f of n is big omega of n and hence you cannot say that f of n is theta of n so see you if the degree of polynomial is 2 then you are only able to tell that this is theta of n square and once you have the number of operation and in the operations you know that the degree of polynomial is 2 and you are able to write only the 2 and this is the tight one. And that's why with the help of the theta notation, we are just denoting the tight bound, nothing lower or nothing upper. So whenever you are exact, whenever you have come to know the, whenever you have gone uh, analyze your algorithm and you come to know that algorithm A, the operations required by the algorithm A is f of n and f of n is maybe 10 n q plus 5 n e square plus 10 this may happen and then you can just say that this is the theta of n q so once you write with the help of the theta notation means you are telling that okay this is I am going to represent the tight bond but for this case you need to tell that with this bond this analysis is for the best case or this is for the worst case so you must say that in worst case if you have analyzed the if you have counted the operation in worst case then you say that in worst case algorithm a requires time theta of n q so you reader will come to know that once you say in worst case theta of n q means reader will come to know that okay, yes this is the tight bound in the worst case okay whenever you have this is the operations required by your algorithm in best case then you say that the in best case algorithm it takes theta of n q time so reader will come to know that in the best case this is the tight bond so you have done the object analysis and you are if you have if you are sure that then you can represent with the help of the theta notation and whenever you go for the theta notation this always denotes the tight bond so you, there is no room to think that whether this bond is tight or not. Theta notation always denotes the tight bond. So theta notation can be used for denoting the complexity in the best case. It can also be used to denote the complexity in the worst case. It can also be used to denote the complexity in the average case. In all the cases, you have to specify that the algorithm A requires in worst case theta of g of n algorithm a requires in worst case theta of g of n or algorithm requires average time of algorithm is theta of g of n so you have to mention always whenever you go for the theta notation 
you need to specify that in which case you are going to represent the analysis. As the theta notation only denotes the tight bound, nothing upper or nothing lower case. So why by intuition, big O notation denotes the upper bound, and you are claiming that your this is the worst case of your algorithm. You will not take more than this operation. If you have the if you are representing the analysis without using any modifier with the help of the big O notation, then you are specifying the worst case of your algorithm. This is the upper one. Whenever you are using the big omega notation without using any modifier, and you are claiming the lower one. So your your claim is that your algorithm will not take time less than this, but your algorithm can take time more than this. Now, whenever you come to the theta notation, then theta notation is can be used for denoting the upper bound of any algorithm, or theta notation can also be used to denote the lower bound of any algorithm. And in the big O notation, you have seen that the bound may or may not be tight. The upper bound may or may not be tight. This may or may not be tight. And this also lower bound again may or may not be tight. May not be tight. So by definition, you know, come to know that you you are able to write the you are able to express the with the help of the asymptotic notation big O or big omega, and where your bound may not be tight. Like if, if you have the f of n and f of n is 10 n square plus 50, then you can say that this is big O of n square, and this is the tight bound. So whenever you are saying big O of n square, this means f of n is less than or equal to c into g of n. So you are also you can also say that this is big O of n cube because you are saying less than or equal to g of n. So g of n here is should be more than this. And if this is the operation, then you can say all this also and this also by definition. So that's why I'm saying that big O notation may or may not be tight. Similarly, with, if you are going to represent with the help of the big omega notation, then 10 n square plus 50 can be written as big omega of n square. You can say, once you are saying like this, means f of n is more than or equal to this. And you can also say that big omega of n, because f of n is also more than, greater than, f of n is greater than g of n, and this is linear. So when, once you have the f of n is this and you are representing with this, then this is not the tight one. So big O notation and big omega notation provide the asymptotic bonds that may or may not be tight. In as, as compared to these notation, once you go for the theta notation, then theta notation also provide the asymptotic bonds. And you can use the theta notation to denote the asymptotic upper bond or to denote the asymptotic lower one. The, what is the main thing in case of this is theta notation provide the tight bond. So whenever you use the theta notation, the notation provides asymptotic tight bond. This is the condition. So whenever you are using the theta notation, this means you are providing the tight bond and then every time you are going to use the theta notation, you have to specify that in which case you are going to represent the analysis, whether you are telling about the best case or whether you are telling about the worst case. So whenever, say you, have, you know the insertion sort algorithm, in case of the insertion sort, and you know that once the list is already sorted, you are given the list, which is already sorted in increasing order. Okay, already sorted. And your target is to sort the list. You are given the list to sort in increasing order. And the given list is already in increasing order. Then for finding the position of every element in the list, you take only one operation, one comparison. Hence, in the best case, your insertion sort runs in order of n times. So, <clears throat> You can say that the 
running time of insertion sort i am writing like this insertion sort running time of insertion sort is big omega of n so once you are writing like this so you intuition of big omega omega notation is to denote the lower bound so you are claiming that running time of insertion sort is big omega of n means this is the best case of your insertion sort means your claim is that the your insertion sort algorithm will not run less than this time this is your claim so with the help of the without using modifier you have used the big omega notation here the best case of insertion sort you can also represent with the help of big o notation so you can say running time of insertion sort in best case is big o of n this is correct way to write so either you can write this if you, if you want to denote the best case of your insertion sort then you can write this and or you can write this so with the help of the big omega notation you don't require to say explicitly that this is the best case because big note big omega notation already denotes that intuition is that to represent the lower bound but if you are using the big o notation then you must say this is the best case time so you are saying that in best case your algorithm in best case your insertion sort algorithm takes time order of n this is in the best case so this is the modifier you are going to use okay similarly so if you say the running time of insertion sort is big omega of n but here if you say that running time of insertion sort running time of insertion sort is big o of n square if you say like this then by intuition big o notation don't the upper case and hence you are claiming that you are this is the worst case time of the insertion sort so insertion sort algorithm runs in worst case this time you can also say that running time of insertion sort in worst case worst case is big omega of n square this is also true so here running time of insertion sort is big omega of n big o of n square so by intuition o notation says that yes this is the worst case time so but if you are using the big omega notation for denoting the worst case of insertion sort then you have to say that running time of insertion sort in worst case you have to use the modifier worst case in worst case is big omega of n square this is this must be <coughs> clear to you in case of theta notation when you say that if you are writing like this so when you say running time of insertion sort is theta of n square if you say like this running time of insertion sort is theta of n square then theta notation denotes the tight bound this means this means you are claiming that you have not used modifier in worst case or best case here you you have just tell that running time of insertion sort is theta of n square this means you are telling that the insertion sort algorithm runs in best means best case or in worst case means that running time of insertion sort in both the cases best case and worst case is same as theta of n square but and this statement you know that this is wrong because you know the best case of insertion sort is order of n 
and worst case of insertion sort is order of n square. But here it says that insertion sort runs in the minimum n square time and also maximum n square time. So if you are going to use the modifier, if you are going to use the theta notation, then in every case, you have to specify running time of insertion sort. You have to tell that in worst case. In, in worst case. In worst case is theta of n square, then this will be OK. So <clears throat> theta notation actually, with the help of the theta notation, you are going to denote the asymptotic bond that is that is tight. This is the only notion. It is not going to denote the asymptotic upper bond or asymptotic lower bond. 